Welcome back to another video, you guys. Today, we're doing some more wiring. We are wiring my boost gauge into the Golf R. Uh, right here, we got the Pro Sport boost gauge. It is their Evo series. Uh, I got this off ECS Tuning. Looks like a nice one. Uh, comes with everything I need, besides one part that I have a buddy delivering in about five minutes. All right, you guys, this is my boy, Mac. <laughs> Mac, tell me what you made for me. We've got the Mark VI vent gauge pot. Yeah. How'd you make that? It's on the 3D printer, so it took about like three hours to print, just layer by layer. You got the time lapse for you, so. We'll yeah. put that in right here. Thank you so Hell much, yeah. bro. I, that's amazing. We're gonna throw this in right now. We got my heaters going, it's freezing out here. Uh, we're gonna get this gauge pot in though. So we're gonna come around to here and start on the inside by pulling this vent out so we can swap it with the vent pod. All right, we got the vent removed. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the stock vent with my new vent pod. All right, well, there it is. <laughs> okay, so the old vent just kind of falls out like that. I think these might actually have to come out now that I'm thinking about it. I didn't watch any videos on this, but for this boost gauge to sit all the way in through here, I don't think these can stay in. Uh, I could be mistaken though, so. So I removed all of the fins on the inside so we won't have any interference with the back of the boost gauge in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert the boost gauge into the vent pod. It is a little bit tight, so I'm gonna use a little bit of WD-40 around the inside and work this all the way in, and then I'll get back to you. All right, with a little bit of WD-40, we got the boost gauge right into the pod. So we're gonna go ahead and put the wire into the back of this, and then put this all back together and put it back in the car. So I think I'm gonna run into an issue if I have the wires go through this. If I'm trying to close on and off the vent, which I don't normally do with this one, but if I don't want it on or off at some point, um, the wires are gonna get caught in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole on the side of this to run the wires through so that I won't have any interference in the back. the front plate back on. So a pretty cool trick that I've learned over the years for threading wires through small places is to take some of this big cable, you can find this at your local hardware store, or you can really use any type of wire, but thread this all the way through, cut a piece big enough off to thread it all the way through from top to bottom. Tape your wires to this end and pull it through to the bottom. wires here. This is how our boost gauge looks. I love how it looks. It fits perfectly in there. Uh, it's going to look really nice when it's turned on. So let's go ahead and figure out how to hook these wires up where they need to go and then we'll turn it on for the first time. So this is what I got so far. As you can see I went ahead and attached the accessory wire up to the previous spot that we hooked up the accessory for the amp in the back. So I just made a little three-way connector and put all three spots there. The next thing I'm gonna do is I have this black ground wire for the gauge that is gonna just get grounded somewhere up in here. I'm just gonna probably just take this bolt out and put it in behind there. Um, so I'll have the ground done. And then there's three wires left down there. One is for power, that's the red one. And the other two are irrelevant since I'm not using the green color. I'm only using white uh, on the gauge. So uh, we'll get the power hooked up and then it should be good to go.
is out and the battery tray is free. So now we can get behind here and pull the wires through for the power. Everything's hooked up very jankly right now. I have it grounded pretty crappily, but it's fine. I have the boost tap hooked up. I have the line going through. I have the filter in the middle and the line going to the boost center. This really looks a lot more complicated than it is. So let's get in the car and start it for the first time and see what happens. We have power. Oh, boy. So she's reading negative right now. That's good. That means we have vacuum pressure. Let's go ahead and give it a couple of rubs. So it's not going into positive numbers, which is concerning. We might have to take it out for a drive and see if it needs to be under load. Uh, otherwise I hooked something up wrong but I don't think I did, so let's go out on the road and test it. Yes! We're pushing boost! That's so cool. Turns out it did just need to be under load. We got numbers on there. Uh, the one thing that is concerning is that it doesn't turn off right away. It takes about two minutes for the gauge to actually turn off with the accessory power. I thought, I, I thought it was because I had hooked it up wrong, but uh, it does definitely turn off. It shut off after about like two or three minutes. Um, so hopefully my battery doesn't die because of that, but it is hooked up. I'm gonna rework the wiring maybe tomorrow uh, because it's getting cold and it's getting late. But it works, so that is a success for this install, as all of them have been so far, which is super exciting. The next one is gonna be another charge pipe. Hope you guys are enjoying, as always, make your dreams a reality, and we will see you- Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay, let's stop for a second. I'm gonna interrupt this outro really quick. It's a couple days later, and I need to explain to you what you're actually supposed to do to hook this boost gauge up. I hope none of you guys watched that install and followed me with that, because it was not correct. I got a little excited and got into it. This is what you're actually supposed to do. You need to wire the boost gauge to the back of the switch. I was trying to avoid that ever since the beginning. I'm not really sure why. I thought it was gonna be too complicated, but in reality, it's 20 times easier than what I did. The only thing that should be running from the inside of the car to the engine is the tube that connects to the boost tap. Everything else is in here. Okay. Everything that I had running to here should not be there. There's a spot for it on the back of the light switch. The only thing running from the inside of the car out here is this line. So that runs into the car. And then everything else sits behind here. The little box that connects everything together, that's sitting in there. All the wires go to the back of the light switch. There's no point to wire them anywhere up in the engine bay when they can be wired right there. It's a lot easier and it shuts off right away. So. Make sure to do that. There's tons of other YouTube videos out there on this boost gauge, so I just got too excited. I didn't watch one until the end of mine, and I was like, why isn't it turning off? That's why. There's an accessory port on the back that's made for this, and yeah. So don't watch this video and install it by this video, and just watch it for entertainment, and you can laugh at my sort of failure, but it is fixed now, it does work. But I just wanted to tell you guys that so you didn't go through this install and install it like I did and have to backtrack a bunch. So that's how it is now. Let's carry on with the outro. Hope you guys are enjoying as always, make your dreams a reality and we will see you in the next one.